Hey, what's up? Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming and going to feature an inside pitch game on the channel. And I'm playing this actually offline. I'm doing an offline replay of the 1980 American League season. And every once in a while, I will just throw in a random matchup on the channel. Uh, currently on day three of the 1980 season. And today going to feature a, a game between the Minnesota Twins and the Oakland A's. And the A's, um, Billy Martin, uh, Billy Ball at its finest really, and very controversial handling by Martin of their pitching staff. All five starters logged well over 200 innings, and Rick Langford actually logged 290 innings that year. And a lot of folks blame Martin's handling or excessive use of the starters uh, for some of the arm problems, most notably Langford and Norris developed uh, later on in their career. Uh, the A's, that was kind of a necessity too. The A's did not have a great bullpen. They did have Ricky Henderson though, who hit 303 and stole 100 bases that year. So that kind of makes them an exciting and intriguing uh, team to me. And that's why they're going to be featured in our first uh, look in from the 1980 AL replay. So against the Twins, the Twins lineup consists of Mike Covage leading off at first, Rob Wilfong at second, Roy Smalley at short, Ken Landro in left, Butch Winder behind the plate. Danny Goodwin is the DH. Rick Sofield in center. Hoskin Powell in right. John Castino at third. And on the mound for the Twins, Pete Redfern. He had a record of 7-7, seven and seven, 4.56 ERA in 1980. And he has a stamina of 24 batters faced, or 12 uh, for a pull rating, which is combined runs, hits, and uh, walks. For the A's, Ricky Henderson, of course, leads off in left. Dwayne Murphy, second in center. Mitchell Page, the DH. Dave Revering is at first. Wayne Gross at third. Mike Davis in right. Jeff Newman behind the plate. Mario Guerrero at short. And Rob Piccolo, who hit a uh, game one grand slam against these very same twins to pace the A's victory, uh, finishes it off in the nine hole at second base. And, of course, Matt Keogh on the mound for the A's. And Keo has a fatigue rating of 31 and 13. So we will get going and a couple of annotations. We are ready to go. And of course, um, inside pitch baseball, one thing it does to me uh, better than any game on the market is capture the uh, triad between the pitcher, stadium, and batter. Does it very well, it's very seamless, um, flows exceptionally well. And also the range plays in this game make a significant difference both on outs and hits. And we'll see that uh, likely pop up several times during this game. And actually one of my favorite features of the game. So that said, let's get ready to go. Mike Cubbage leading off against Keo. We go to Keo's card first and 6-2, that is gonna be a wild result, so foul ball. And 1-6, and we go right away to the ballpark in Oakland Coliseum. 4-2, uh, and it's going to be a star line 5. Fly ball to center field by Covage, and Murphy takes care of that. One down. Rob Wilfong, the batter. And 2-3, that would be a tired single, a blank as Keo is fresh. So we go to Wilfong's card. Ground ball down to second base, and scooping that up on the second hop is Pichelo. Over to first base, and two outs here in the first for the Twins. Keogh to face Smalley, and that's a blank on Keogh's card. And Smalley gets a hold of that and driven into center field, and that is going to get down. Murphy can't get it, and around first going to second base, and Smalley, a stand-up double. So a two-out base runner in scoring position for the Twins. Matt Keogh looking to end that right here. 6-1 is going to be blank. And 3-2 to Kenny Landro, and that's going to be a fly ball into left field, and going back to take that in is Ricky Henderson. So side is retired, and the Twins get a hit. Leave Smalley at second base, and heading to the bottom of the first inning, Ricky Henderson to face Pete Redfern. And one and a six, and K-plus. And K-plus uh, adds 10 to the batter's strikeout rating, so against the right-hander, that makes Ricky a 16. 
and an 18, not going to be enough to fan Henderson. So we go to Henderson's card, and that's a fly ball into right field, looping towards the line, and coming in to take that basket catch style is Hoskin Powell. One down for the A's, Dwayne Murphy the batter. And five and a two, and that is going to be a potential error. So Dwayne Murphy, 6'2", and that is a single into left field. And in left field, uh, Landro is going to be a 9'17", so no error. That's a straight-up single for Murphy. So the A's have their first base runner, and Murphy, Redfern has a hold rating of minus 1, so 3 or less. And that's going to be a pickoff attempt, actually. And pickoff, 1 to 4. Seven, and Murphy gets back in head first. He'll stay put at first base. So next batter. And that's a potential K, 19, no strikeout. Mike, he's going to get his shot. And one, two on his card, line drive, and that's right at second base. And a potential double play. So on the line out, a runner on first base, line to second, and just back in ahead of the throw is Murphy. So a couple of close calls for Dwayne Murphy at first, but two outs now, and Jeff Newman the batter. I didn't mean to roll that. 5-5 five, five on Redfern's card, and again a potential K, and 12. Now park adjustment, Oakland Coliseum adds two. That's going to be 14, and swing and a miss. Newman goes down. And actually, I have the batting order screwed up. One second here while I fix this. Okay, I jacked that up. Apologies for that. I actually did not change the A's batting order from the opening game. So, squared away now. And actually, revering that will not be a strikeout. So, he'll get a crack. And thankfully caught that. 6-1, and that's a two-hopper back to the pitcher. Redfern gloves it, whips it over to first. So no negative impact overall as we are through one inning with no score. And leading it off to the Twins, catcher Butch Weiniger here in the second against Keel, And potential walk, uh, a plus one to the walk uh, ratings of the batters in Oakland Coliseum. So against the right-hander, a 9, and that's going to be good enough to draw the base on balls for Weiniger, who trots down to first base. And Weiniger, uh, minus 1 and 1 to attempt to steal, so he's not even going to get the opportunity. And Danny Goodwin, the batter, runner on first, and 2-1, and that'll be a blank Goodwin. Sits on the pitch, takes a cut, and that's going to be a fly ball into left field. And Ricky Henderson, plenty of speed out there to run that down. One down, back to first goes Weiniger. Center fielder Rick Sofield, the batter for the Twins. And 3-3, potential wild pitch, 20, Keogh, no problem there. Foul ball, back to Keogh's card. And this will be an error if it is a ground ball, an error check if it's a ground ball. And 6-6 six, six to Sofield, that's going to be a split. And against the right-hander, that is a single. And single into right field. So here's, here's the one part where you have to do a little bit of checking on run rating. Weiniger is a 2. And in right field for the A's, a minus 1 is the arm of Davis. And then going first to third, you would add 2, so a total of 3. And one, and getting over third is Weiniger. So, Sofield with the single. And again, the running, uh, the running, it's, again, it's very intuitive, as I said in my review. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to it to where it's second nature. And I'm getting there, not quite there yet. Uh, four, three, and we're gonna have a range play for Hoskin Powell. And again, one of my favorite parts of this game. And this is a ground ball down to first base. And at first base, usually I'll throw the third dice at the same time, but I'm adding a little bit of suspense here. 
So at first base for the A's, Revering is a five. That's as good as it gets, and he does not get to it, and that's what I like about this game. So ground ball, and that is going to get a run home. As Hoskin Powell is going to come in to score, and getting over to third base is Rick Sofield. So the Twins jump out to a 1-0 lead, and range plays, like I mentioned, make a huge difference in this game. John Castino, the batter now. Still only one out. Runners on the corner for Keogh, and that's going to be a walk plus. And against the right-hander, that's going to load him up. So Keogh in trouble early in this one. Martin is going to leave him in to weather the storm. And 6-2 and 18, no wild check there. Going to be another foul ball. And 4-2, K check and coverage, swing and a miss. Keel, a big strike out there. Two outs now for the Twins. And Keel will be happy if he can get out of this inning with only the damage that has occurred thus far. And 4-1 and another potential walk. 20 will be no walk. We'll go to Wilfong's card for the result. And two to four, ground ball down to first base. Reverend does not have to range far to get this one. He is going to take it himself unassisted. So inning over, but the Twins get a run on a couple of hits, leave a couple, and we are heading to the bottom of the second. Minnesota one, open at zero. Wayne Gross set to lead it off for the A's. And again, the batting order fixed and potential hit by pitch. Now, Redfern is a minus 10 and Gross is only a 2. So that will be a blank. We go to Gross's card. Sharp line drive down the line to first base and reaching out to snag that is Cubbage. Excellent play at first. One down is Gross. Tattooed that ball but hit it right at the first baseman. Redfern, 1-4, and potential K chance, 9, and that's going to be a swing and a miss. Davis goes down. So Redfern with the high cheese brings up Jeff Newman, two outs. And 3-1, a potential walk, and going to be no walk there. Jeff Newman's going to swing away. And ground ball down to first base. Coverage gloves that, and going to take himself to the back. So three up, three down. Go the A's here in the second, heading to third, 1-0. Minnesota in the lead, and Roy Smalley the batter. Smalley doubled his first time up in the first inning. And 5-1, and one, potential home run, and switch hitter will make him a lefty. So it would have to be a 1-2 to two on Keo's card with the question mark by the home run. So we treat that as a blank, and Smalley split result against the right-hander. That's going to be a fly out to right field. Gave that a good ride, but couldn't get it down as ranging over to make the catch is Mike Davis. So Ken Landreau, the batter, he flew out his first time up. 1-2-K, swing and a miss, and down on strikes. Three pitches, Keogh gets Landro, brings up Butch Weiniger. Butch walked and scored in the second. And three's wild pitch will be a foul ball. Go get off of Keo's card and two to five potential strikeout. No, Weiniger going to put it in play and grounds out right back to Keo. Flips it over to first base and three up, three down for the first time. Go the Twins heading to the bottom of the third inning. A's trailing 1 0. Mario Guerrero looking to get the fire started for the home standing A's. And two and a one foul ball on the wild result. Deuce, deuce, and potential hit batter, and going to be no hit batter there for Redfern. Guerrero swings away, and that's a ground ball down to third base, and backhanding that in the near the line is Castino. Whips it across the diamond, one down. Rob Piccolo, opening day hero with the grand slam home run, the light hitting Piccolo. Only had a total of five in 1980. And two to five on Redfern's chart is going to be a potential K against the right-hander. And Piccolo tries to hold up, but umpire says he went. Strike three, back to the dugout he goes. Top of the order. Run, Ricky, run. The greatest base stealer in the history of the game. And two and a five, and that is going to be a potential K. And three, Ricky. Can't hold up, and he goes down on strikes. So another three up, three down inning for Redfern and the Twins. 
He has set down eight in a row now as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Minnesota clinging to a 1-0 lead. Keo to face Goodwin, and that's going to be a ballpark. Here we go, 4-2. And that'll be a star line five, which is a fly out to center field. Dwayne Murphy, plenty of room to pull that in. One down for the Twins here in the fourth. Rick Sofield, the center fielder up. He singled and was stranded at third in the second inning. And we're going to have another range play. Love the range plays. 3-1. And that is going to be a potential ground ball. And again, Revering is a five. Excellent range at first base. And this time he makes the play. And he's going to get up, flip to Keo covering, 3-1 on the putout. So two down. Range plays come in a factor in sometimes as many as seven, eight times a game. And again, can't say it enough, absolutely love the way they uh, affect gameplay. So three to five, that's going to be a star line result. And that'll be a fly ball to Ricky Henderson in the left. And the Twins go down in order in the fourth. So we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Minnesota still clinging to a 1-0 lead. And Dwayne Murphy set to lead it off for the A's. Uh, four to five, blank going to Murphy's card. And 6-4, that's a ground ball down to first base. And a six going to be a 3-1. The way I do that, uh, seven or less, we make it 3-1. And eight or above would be three unassisted. So Murphy is retired as Cubbage, flips to Redfern, brings up Mitchell Page, lined out to the second baseman his first time up. And potential K-check, 11, Page, swing and a miss, and the high heat gets Page, two down. So Redfern, not a huge strikeout pitcher, but he has caught the A's four times now early in this one. And that brings up first baseman Revering and another potential K-check. And Revering, he's going to put this one in play. Gets a nice hack at that. And it'll be a fly ball into right field. And ranging over to take that is Hoskin Powell. And once again, the A's are set down in order. Had one hit in the first inning, and that has been it so far. Heading to the fifth, 1-0. Twins in the lead. John Castino set to lead it off against Keough. And again, the foul ball on the wild pitch check. Uh, four and a one potential walk. And against the right-hander, that plus addition for the stadium is going to put Castino on. It's another area where the ballpark will come into play sometimes with walks and strikeouts, making you just get one or just miss one. So runner at first base. Top of the order, 2-2, two, two, and we're going to the ballpark against Mike Cubbage. And ones, and that is a single plus into left field. So runners will automatically advance two bases on this. So in left field, Cubbage is a 2, and in left field for the A's, Uh, Ricky is a minus two. So uh, this is going to be no uh, no way a positive result here for Cubbage. He's going to be thrown out trying to stretch, uh, stretch a single into a double. So going to third is Castino and then 7-4 on the put out. Normally there, he would have a shot, but he's only a two base runner and you deduct the outfielder's arm. Ricky is one of the few minus two arms in the, in the uh, game. So coverage was doomed from the get-go trying to stretch that and that brings up a red uh, Rob Wilfong. And potential K-check, 14 against the right-hander, not gonna get it done, just missed it. Uh, two and a three, and that's going to be a single into right field, and that brings home a run. So again, the ballpark didn't boost it enough, and the Twins now up 2-0 as Wilfong drives in Castino, runner on first base. Uh, Wilfong, he'll go if a two, nope, brings up Roy Smalley. One down, runner on first, and it's going to be a blank. Going to Smalley's card, 6-4, and that is going to be a single pass third base. 
and on a single pass third base first to third would need to be a six base runner and Wolfong is a four so he'll hold up at second but the twins making some noise here in the top of the fifth Keo needs to buckle down and 6-3, that is going to be a star line against, uh, that's only against the right-hander. So we'll go to Landro's card. Again, these slashes mean lefty-righty splits. And 6-4, Landro pops that up into shallow left field. Coming in is Henderson going back is Guerrero, and Guerrero is going to pull it in. So out number two comes on the pop-up to shortstop, Butch Weiniger now. Runners on first and second. We'll try and get the Twins uh, some more runs in. Three and a four, possible K, no K. And Weiniger, four and a six, and star line one. It's going to be a fly ball to Ricky Henderson. And Henderson, plenty of time to get to that. So one run comes in as the Twins get two hits. And they leave a couple. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth inning. Minnesota with a 2-0 lead behind Pete Redfern who had a 456 ERA in 1980. So we'll see how much longer his luck can hold out. Six and a one, and against a left-hander, that goes to the batter card, would have been a single up the middle against a right-handed batter. Uh, one three, pops him up into foul territory, and going over to pull that in is Cubbage, one down. So again, splits make a difference in this game. Range, again, a huge difference, 2-4. And against the left-hander, that is a possible home run check. Davis gets into that, and that ball is deep, 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 and gone! Mike Davis gets the A's on the board with a solo shot, and that got out of here in a hurry over the right field wall. So just like that, lightning strikes, shutout is gone. Second hit of the day for the A's and 2-1 now. The Twins bringing up Jeff Newman. And Newman, 1-5, swing and a miss. Redfern, the curveball, had Newman way out in front. Two down. Strikeout number five for Pete Redfern. Mario Guerrero, the batter. And 5-6, and potential error on a ground ball. And 2-6 pops him up, no error check, and that is into shallow right field. Going back to pull that in is Wilfong, and side is retired. But the A's scratch back a run on the solo shot by Mike Davis. We're heading to the sixth inning. 2-1, Minnesota in the lead, and Danny Goodwin set to lead it off for the Twins. And again, Keel hitting that wild spot. That'll be a foul ball, 5-5. That'll be a potential error check regardless of where the ball goes. 6-1, line drive, and 18. 18 is above the air uh, rating of uh, Picciolo, so he makes a nice play on the line drive there, one down. Rick Sofield, the batter. Keo gets a sign, delivers, and it's going to be a split check, and against the left-hander, uh, that's going to be over the uh, result. 1 to 4 would be a star line result. 1 to 9 against the righty. So we go to Sofield's card. And 6 1, fly ball into right field. And coming in to get his first action out there is Mike Davis with a nice two handed grab. And that brings up Hoskin Powell. Two down. Keel looking for a smooth inning. And 5-4, going to be a blank, going to Powell's card. Powell takes a rip at that, and that's going to be a star line. Uh, star line 4 will be a ground ball down to shortstop. Guerrero whips that across the diamond to Revering, and 3-up, three 3-down three go the Twins. So we're heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Minnesota clinging to a 2-1 lead. And the powerful Rob Picciolo struck out his first time up. And 6s, that's going to go to Picciolo's card. Four and a six, and against the right-hander, a fly out to right field would have been a double against the left-handed pitcher. Brings up Ricky Henderson. Henderson dying to get on. He's flown out and struck out in this one. And five and a one, going to be a range play off the park. And six one, and going to be a range play off a rare play. Base is empty. So things get really interesting here. 6-5, uh, inside pitch possibly hits batter, resolved like a hit by pitch. Either way, batter charges the mound. 
causing a bench clearing ball, one player from each team thrown out. Rolling the 1D20 with 1 to 9 being the players at that position in the game and 10 to 20 being a bench player. All right, so there you go. <laughs> uh, won't worry about the range play there, so we will resolve the hit by pitch. And for Ricky, a 5 and a minus 10 for Redfern, so that is not going to happen. So let's roll for ejections. First for the visiting twins, and 13, that will be a bench player. And we're just going to say, I'm just going to count 4 in. And Bombo Rivera is not going to be able to enter this game for any reason. And let's see what the A's have to contend with. And 9, that's going to be the right fielder, so Mike Davis is going to be ejected. So Davis gets the A's on the board and gets thrown from the game. So he's hitting on all cylinders, so right field, we will need to replace him. And we're going to bring in Tony Armas to handle that. So Mr. Davis, an early shower, and Armas actually has uh, even more power than Davis, so it's a positive for the A's. And speed, he is a three, same as Davis. And defensively, actually a better arm, so right field now for the A's becomes a three, seven, and a minus two on the arm. So there we go, order is restored, and Ricky Henderson, who was not hit, will resume his at bat. Quite the action there, and 2-4, and that's going to be a potential strikeout, and Ricky Henderson against the right-hander, 7, and he whiffs again. So Redfern glares at Henderson as he walks off. Ricky glares back. Words are exchanged, but back to business. Dwayne Murphy, the batter. And 5-2, and a two, that was quite the sequence of events. Possible error check. Uh, five and a three, and that is a fly ball into left field, 19, going to be well above the error rating of uh, Glendro out there, so side is retired, and that was a very uh, busy inning in terms of activity. We head to the seventh inning, Twins clinging to a 2-1 lead, and first time that's ever come up on a rare play, that was kind of cool. So 1-6, Keo still on the hill, and we're going to the ballpark. And Castino, 4-1, that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop. So Guerrero retires Castino back to the top of the order. And Redfern, by the way, he'll be uh, fatigued in his second batter he pitches to in the next inning. So we're going to go, uh, going to be a little... Uh, Proactive and going to get Don't know we want to bring in the closer this early which is Doug Corbett will definitely get him ready and stretching uh, John Verholden will be the other pitcher warming up for the twins so Corbett and Verhoeven will get loose as Redfern, probably not going to last much longer. So back to action on the field, Keo to Cubbage. And 6-5, potential K, and Cubbage swinging a miss. So Keo, uh, that is his third strike out of the game for the A's. Two down, Rob Wolf on the batter. And 3-1, potential walk, and Wilfong, he's going to draw the base on ball, so that's the third walk given up as well. And we'll see if Wilfong tries to steal, needs a 2 to get a jump. Would have got it without uh, Keo's hold rating of a minus 1. So again, ratings are just always coming into play and affecting play in this game. And again, 
I can't say enough how impressed I am with this game. 4-1 uh, Keel, going to be a potential walk. No walk there. Smalley's going to take a hack. And threes, and that is going to be a star line. And eight against the right, or a split result. That will be a double. So Wilfong, uh, going to be a plus one on a chance to score. Wilfong, that makes his run rating a five. And in center fielder, Murphy is a... Minus one, so four, we go to the throw chart, and two, using the first die, coming in to score is Wilfong, and the Twins open up a 3-1 lead. And that is Smalley's third hit and second double of the day. That one plates a run and a much-needed run for the Twins, as Ken Landro will be the batter. 6-2, uh, that wild again, and this time that's going to get away. Wild pitch, scampering over third goes Smalley. Keo collects himself. He's been all over the place, and this will go to the ballpark. Landro. And 5 6 at the ballpark. That is a ground ball down to shortstop, and Guerrero is going to get the A's out of the inning, but not before a run comes across. Single run on one hit. They leave one, and we are heading into the seventh inning stretch. 3 1. Twins in the lead in a close game here. So Mitchell Page will lead it off in the bottom of the seventh. And 1980, just such a great baseball season. Some outstanding uh, individual seasons. Again, teams still ran there when they when they had base runners that could. Um, definitely some colorful seasons. Reggie Jackson had a great season for the Yankees, and I debated actually. Uh, I still have to play their day three game, so it was between that and this one. And as you can see on my score sheet, the Yankees actually are going to be next against the Rangers. So yeah, again, just to, just to continue on my review I did on the channel early on this game, really finding this very enjoyable to play. Um, 1A, 1B with payoff pitch is, is far and away my two favorite baseball games. So. Give this a shot at uh, InsideSports.com, and Chris has done a great job with this, but back to the action now. Redfern still on the hill. He's going to get two batters in before he gets tired, and against the left-hander, that'll be a blank. We've been a K-plus otherwise against the righty. Uh, four and a six, and fly ball to left field. And Landro, can of corn out there for him. One down to start the seventh inning for the home team. And Dave Reverend, and after this batter, and again, potential K-plus, but it was a righty instead of a lefty, and against the righty, that's going to be a single pass second base. So they are not even going to mess around and leave Redford in there to pitch tired. He's going to get pulled after going six and a third. They pitched a heck of a game. He has only given up three hits. Uh, struck out six, and he did not walk anybody. So real good, a uh, real good outing for Redfern. Uh, Revering is his charge on the base paths, however. And John Verhoeven, Verhoeven, the righty is going to come in. He was three and four, no saves, three point nine seven ERA in nineteen eighty, and they're going to be looking at him to get the Twins hopefully through the eighth inning, at least through the seventh, and then they can bring in their closer, uh, Doug Corbett, who had an excellent season in 1980. So Verhoeven's fatigue ratings are 10 batters faced, or a total of five runs, hits, walks. And Wayne Gross will be the first man he faces. So four and a one, and right away we get the range play off Verhoeven's card. And 2-6, and it's going to be a star line 5, which is a fly ball to left field. And out in left field for the Twins. Uh, with a rating of 2 is Landro. And Landro, nice running catch. Snow cones that, and scampering back to first. Revering 
So a great play out in left field by Landro, and a two is usually pretty good odds. That's going to drop, but does not. Tony Armas up with two outs, and Verhoeven gets a sign. Five and a six potential home run, and against a right-handed batter, 16. So in this case, because it's a question mark, you check first the pitcher. Uh, 16 is within a Verhoeven's range for a right-handed batter. Now we go to Armas, and against the right-handed pitcher, it's all over, but the shouting, that ball is deep and gone, and we are tied up. Tony Armas in for the injured or ejected Mike Davis. Does just what Davis did in his last at bat, and that take a Twins pitcher deep, and the A's fans are going crazy. We are tied up at three in the bottom of the seventh inning, and Jeff Newman, the batter. Uh, two five, and that would be a tired single. Will be a blank instead, and that will be a single into right field for Newman. So Verhoeven has thrown gasoline onto the fire here in the seventh inning. Mario Guerrero, the batter, still two outs, still looking to get out of this inning. Four two is going to be a potential error, and five and a four, and that is a ground ball down to shortstop, and shortstop for the Twins, Smalley. He is a seven. He's going to make the error, and it just wants to make sure on the error check there. And ground ball, and he's going to boot the ball. So they're going to have runners at first and second now on the E6. And the Twins falling apart in the seventh inning. Rob Picciolo, and again, grand slam on opening day. Looking to do the same here. And 2-1 going to the ballpark. 1-4, and that is a potential home run, and Picciolo in eight against the right-hander just misses it. That's going to be a blank. So going to Picciolo's card, that would have been something. He is not a big hitter. And 5-2, and instead, that is a double into right field, and that's going to get the go-ahead run across the plate. And double to right is going to be a minus one to the run rating and right fielder for the rain or the uh, twins. Hoskin Powell is a zero. So Guerrero, two or less, he is going to come in to score. And actually, I did wrong. Rolling off the throw chart, two, and he is in to score. So both those runs unearned on Verhoeven. And Picciolo, six RBIs early in the season, and that's going to be it for Verhoeven. He is done, so he can't get the uh, team out of the seventh inning. So he is going to go only one-third of an inning. Gave up three hits. And charged thus far with three runs. And two of them will be unearned. Does not walk anyone. Does not strike out anyone. And I think at this point, the Twins, they're not going to bring Corbett in in this situation. So bringing in the veteran, Mike Marshall. And Marshall... wants to put out the fire he has to get one out and that out will be in the form of one Ricky Henderson so three and a five and three five is going to be a single pack up the middle and another run comes in to score um, Picciolo is a run rating of three and to get second to home you only need to be a one So the A's now 6-3 and Henderson at first base, single in an RBI, and of course he is going to see if he can get a jump. Marshall is a minus one, and Henderson gets a jump, and plus one to his steal rating, so 17. And then behind the dish, uh, Weiniger is a minus one, so 16 or better, and Henderson 20. And he is gunned down, so Winder comes up throwing. And Henderson 
He has one stolen base. That's his first caught stealing, and that's what finally ends the inning. So the A's, big inning for them. Come up with five runs. On five hits, and we are through seven, and the A's lead this six to three, a big outburst. And we can close the book on... Uh, Redfern, he is going to get charged with four runs, only one of them earned due to that error. And meanwhile, Picholo, or Keo, I'm sorry, still on the mound for the A's as we head into the eighth. And he actually, he retired Landro last out of the seventh. He's actually at his fatigue point, but with a three run lead and a shoddy bullpen, we're going to play true billy ball and leave him in there. Uh, Bob Lacey is loosening up just in case as we head into the eighth. And Butch Weininger set to lead it off for the Twins. One out of five and potential home run check. And Weininger, no, a little bit high there. Three, six, and ground ball down to second base. And easy hop there for Pichelo. 4-3 on the putout. Weiniger retired. One down. Danny Goodwin, the batter. 2-1 uh, going to be a blank. Go to Goodwin's card. And 5-4. And that is going to be a star line. 4, which will be a ground ball. I'm sorry, ground ball down to short. So Guerrero handles that. And two quick outs for Keel here, even though he is fatigued. Billy is riding him out. Three and a six, and Sofield is going to draw the base on balls. That has been Keo's one Achilles heel in this game. He has been wild. So two down, runner on first base. He's not going anywhere in this situation. Three, three, potential wild, no wild pitch. Foul ball instead, and Keo living dangerously there. That's a blank. Costa Powell going to put it in play. Four to five, ground ball back to Keel and Keel the easy flip over to first base, and Twins are retired in the eighth. So we head to the bottom of the frame, 6-3, open in front after that big seventh inning. And Mike Marshall is going to close this out for the Twins, and he has a rating of eight and five for fatigue, facing Dwayne Murphy. Uh, five and a four and potential hit by pitch and Murphy adds 10 and Dwayne or I'm sorry Marshall adds 10 making Murphy a 12 so it's going to be a blank instead and 3-2 that's going to be a ground ball down to second base Wilfong with the put out and one down here in the bottom of the eighth inning Mitchell Page the batter Page today 0 for 3 with a strikeout here comes the pitch and going to the ballpark. Oakland Coliseum, and that's going to be another rare play. Hopefully, not as action packed as the last one. Uh, it'll be a 4 uh, four 2. Shallow pop up to right field. The second baseman chases, but doesn't hear the right fielder collide and resolve like a P4 range play. So, range play at second base is a two for Wilfong. Will he make the play? He does, hangs on to it, and there is a collision. Got to check both for an injury. So, Wilfong, he is a um, two. And actually, you know what? We're doing basically replay. We're not going to do the injury thing. So that is going to be a nice running play. And both guys get up and shake it off. Page is retired. Two down here in the eighth. And that brings up first baseman Dave Reverend. Hit 290 in 1980. And five and a six to the ballpark we go again. Stay away from those rare plays. Five and five. And that is a single plus. So that goes into right field. Reverend credit for the single. And he is a three and in center field a minus one for uh, Rick Sofield. So he needs a two or less to get in there and he is thrown out trying to stretch it. Eight six there on the put out. And that retires aside. One hit, no runs, no errors. Nobody left. 
as we head to the top of the ninth inning. And the A's, a comfortable 6-3 lead. Bob Lacey is ready. Matt Keogh is fatigued with a three-run lead. Billy's going to ride him. Uh, five and two, that's going to be blank to Castino. And five and a one, and that is a single pass to pitcher. So the Twins, they're going to make it interesting here in the ninth as Castino gets the leadoff base hit. And Cubbage should be the batter. There he goes. So Castino gets his lead and one and a five home run check and Cubbage, that ball is gone. Mike Cubbage gives that a ride over the right field wall and suddenly it is six to five and Keogh is not going to see the end of this game now. So he's going to go eight innings. Give up a total of eight hits and five runs, all of them earned. Very wild today. He had one, two, three, four, five. Five walks and three strikeouts and that big home run there and that makes it a ball game. So Bob Lacey is going to come in and try and get the save here. Well, Lacey, he had six saves in 1980, a 2.94 ERA, 3-2 record. His fatigue is an 8, pull rating is a 4, and Cubbage celebrating and encouraging Rob Wilfong to keep it going. 1 out of 5, that's going to be a blank. And 3-1, and against the left-hander. And again, if uh, Keogh had stayed in, that would have been a single. Instead, that is going to be a 4-3 ground out. So one away, Roy Smalley batting right-handed against the left-handed pitching Lacey. Five and a two, and possible home run check hitting right-handed, and it's in his wheelhouse. 11 or less, he gives it a ride, and it is a 16. That's a blank, so we go to Smalley's card. And five and a four, and fly ball to center field. <laughs> Smalley scorched one down the foul line. It hooked just foul and instead is retired by a fly out to Dwayne Murphy, two down, and this could be it. Lacey looking to seal the deal. 4-2, uh, not gonna be that easy potential error check. Landro, four and a five, and that is a potential, that is a single pass first base, 17. Uh, no error by the first baseman. So we are not done yet as Landro is on first base, and Landro, not going to be able to attempt to steal as he is a two to get a jump and Lacey minus two. Switch hitting Butch Weiniger up hitting from the right side and two and a five going to be a blank. Otherwise would have been a K plus. One five and star line two. Fly ball into center field. Murphy going back and in front of the track makes the play. Ball game is over. So the Twins make it exciting getting two runs on three hits in the top of the ninth. But Lacey comes in and the A's are able to hang on a 6-5 victory. An excellent game. Total of three home runs and I think that is the, uh, actually the highest I've had up to this point was two in a game. So that is a first in this replay. So your final line score The Twins, five runs on nine hits, one error. The A's, six runs on eight hits and no errors. Your winning pitcher is going to be Matt Keogh, and Bob Lacey gets a save. On the other side, John Verhoeven is tagged with a loss. And player of the game in this one, uh, we are going to go with the A's right field position, which is combining uh, Tony Armas and Mike Davis, who got thrown out after a bench clearing brawl in the sixth inning. Uh, together, though, they went two for three with two home runs, two runs scored, and three ribbies. So combo player of the game to the A's right field crew. 
And again, uh, lot, having a lot of fun with this game. I'm going to keep playing it off the channel mostly, but every once in a while I'll just pop in with kind of an update game. So thanks for watching, and like I said, I've played quite a few games, and hopefully I'm getting everything right now. I think I am. Uh, again, the base running, though intuitive, is the one thing that you're going to, that's going to slow you down as you learn the game, but highly recommended. Uh, inside Pitch Baseball, right up there with Payoff Pitch as my two favorite baseball games, and no one else comes close to these two. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and keep swinging for the fences. This is Anthony with Bleacher Bums Gaming, and we'll see ya.